Hey guys, Persistent Programmer here, and today we're going to do another Likul cool question, maximum subarray. So the question is asking, given an, given an integer array nums, find the contiguous subarray. So contiguous subarray means that we need to find a subset in this array that are of consecutive numbers. So we can pick like these numbers, but we can't pick, you know, one number here and three numbers here. So that's what contiguous means which has the largest sum and return its sum. So essentially, we're given an input array with both positive and negative numbers, and we need to find what is the maximum sum I can find from this array um, if I sum up uh, certain consecutive values. Now, we don't actually need to return a subarray in this case, we just need to return the sum, the largest sum. And for this input array, um, the maximum sum that can be formed is through this subarray, and that sum is 6. So we need to return the 6. Okay, let's go ahead and see the strategy of how we can solve this problem. The first solution that may come to mind is just to take the subarray sum starting from one position and then take the sum from here to here, here to here, and then keep going until the end. And then taking the sum starting at the next position and then keep going that way. But that's not the most optimal solution, even though um, it seems like the easiest solution to think of at first. So what we need to apply here is Cadence algorithm. And um, I will walk through that solution with you and then we'll look at the code. So the idea behind Cadence algorithm is that if I am able to find the correct sum, if I make the correct decision of what the sum is at each position, then I should be able to find the highest global sum. So what do I mean by this and how do we implement this, right? So imagine you have only two items here, right? You have negative two and one. And in this case, what you need to ask yourself um, at this point is, is my sum going to be greater if I take the full sum or if I just take the one here? So what you need to ask is, is negative two plus one giving me a higher sum than just taking myself, which is the one at this position? And yeah, of course, the answer is one. So if we apply this concept to the entire array and like iterate over it and at each point ask this question, which sum do I need to take right now? Um, and then analyze that globally. So here we have a one and then another at another spot over here, we would have a four, right? So we just need to ask ourselves, okay, so at each time, if I take the max, um, can I find my total global sum? And that's the, that's the idea behind solving this problem. So I will go into more details and manually solve this problem first before looking at the code. Great, let's apply this concept in practice and see how we can find the sum at each spot. So at the first element, the sum is itself. There's nothing to add, so I just put a negative two here. Now at the one, we want to see if negative two plus one gives me a higher sum than just taking the one itself. And essentially what I'm doing here is I'm seeing, okay, if I start my subarray from this position, is that, uh, is that, does that give me a better chance of finding the global sum? Um, or if I just started from this position? So that is essentially the meaning of this step that we're doing here. So we take a one because yeah, if I start my subarray from here and exclude this negative two, of course, I'm gonna have a higher sum. And then at the next step, yeah, same idea at the one and negative three, right? So if I add the negative three to the one, I get a negative two. So is it better for me to take the negative two or take the negative three? Now, negative two is greater than negative three. So it is better for my partial sum to have this value instead of a lower value since we're trying to find the max here, right? And then at this position at four, 
we compare it to negative 2 and we are seeing hey do I have a better chance of starting my array um, just with this number starting at this number or if I add this number to my previous um, partial sum so 4 minus 2 is 2 so if I started it at the previous spot I will get a total sum of 2 at this position but if I just start a fresh array here at 4 then yeah my partial sum is better so to review what we're doing is we're adding the the next number so we're adding like if we're going in a for loop so we're adding nums i plus our previous partial sum right so that's what we're doing here and we're comparing it to just the nums i just to see oh okay is it, am i better off with starting off at this nums or is it better for me to add to the previous number and accumulate a higher partial sum so this is all we're doing at the local level so if this makes sense then the finding the global max is pretty easy great so let's say we have our partial sums and now looking at these numbers you can see that the global max is right here six right so it's pretty easy to see where the global max is but if we were to do this at a single pass how would we how would we keep track of this six so it's very easy just keep a global max variable right you can say global max or name it however you want to keep track of this max so again at each step if we just keep track of our max so in the first step we don't have um, any other numbers to add our sum to so it's just going to be two and then at this spot, well, our max is 1 now. And then at this spot, our max is still 1. And when we have a 4, okay, we look at our local max. And then, yeah, this is a higher max than any of our previous max. And then at this spot, well, our max is still 4 because 3 is less than 4. And at this spot, okay, we have a new max. So our new max is 5. And then at this spot is 6. And... Well, 1 is less than 6, so we don't update it. And then 5 is also less than 6, so this is our global max. Okay, I hope this solution makes sense to you. And this is a very useful way to solve these type of dynamic programming questions. So the time for this um, solution would be O of n, because we will only iterate over the array once and calculate the partial sum and also the global max on the goal. And that's how we solve these two manually. And the space complexity is O of 1 because we did not need to create any other um, data structures to store the elements since we're calculating on the go. So to summarize, the solution is to iterate over the array and take the partial sum at each point. And I've explained how we're going to do that. And then just find the max at each partial sum. And that will be our global max. And then just return the global max, which will be the 6. Great, so I'm back in the code. And the first thing I've done is initialize the partial sum and the global max as the first element in the array because there are no elements before that. So the sum of that element is itself, right? So now what we're going to do is iterate over the nums array. So I'm going to say for i in range... And we will start from um, the first uh, index because we already took care of the zero index above. So we'll say one and we'll go till the end. Okay. And here, what we're going to do is we'll set the partial sum um, equals. And then we'll take the max of the partial sum plus the next number so plus nums i so the max is going to be either this sum or just the next number by itself okay so that's how we're going to determine the local sum the partial sum at each position and when that's done we just need to find out what the global max is and just keep that variable so we'll say global max equals oh oops I misspelled that global max equals and we'll just take the max of our previous global max and 
and the partial sum. Okay, and this will just give me the global max of um, the previous max or the partial sum at each position. And then what I need to do is return the global max. Okay, so let's give this a run. Okay, I made a typo here. Partial sum, okay. Okay, awesome, accepted. So let's go ahead and submit this. Great, success, awesome. So that was my solution, guys, for maximum subarray. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. All right, happy coding, guys.